Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to add vectors algebraically. Just to warn you, you are gonna need a calculator for this video if you wanna follow along. So if you wanna follow along, just get a calculator real quick, pause it. I'll wait for you right here. So basically, if you wanna add vectors algebraically, we're talking about numbers. The very first thing you need to know about vectors is that the direction matters. And what that means is if I give you a vector that points up and to the right like this. I don't really have a vector that points up and to the right. What do I mean by that? What I'm saying is if it points up and to the right, then really you can form it into a right triangle like this, and it's gonna have an X component and a Y component. And I'm just gonna make up numbers for this example. Like let's say the X component is three and the Y component is five, and who cares what the hypotenuse is? But basically what I'm saying is if you wanna add vectors together, the very first thing you need to do is break into the X and Y components. You cannot do anything else until you break vectors into X and Y components. So the first thing I would do if I were you is I would draw the right triangle, split it up into X and Y components using SOHCAHTOA, which we'll be doing in the next example. So don't worry, I'll show you how to do that. And then you can add or subtract the X and Y components accordingly. But before we get into those examples, I just wanna say one more thing. Typically in this class, if you wanna say the X direction, depending on who your physics professor or who your physics teacher is, you're either gonna be using the notation X hat or I hat. And what this looks like in practice is, if I have three X hat, then that really means three units to the right. That's all it means. Same thing if you see three I hat, it just means three units to the right. If I have negative three X hat or negative three I hat, then that's gonna be three units left. And the reason for that is in this class, we're gonna consider positive to be to the right and upwards, and negative is going to be to the left and downwards. So then next, if we're talking about the Y direction, then the way I represent that on my paper is I'm going to say either Y hat or I'm going to say J hat because for some reason J means Y direction. And again, if I have, let's say, positive four Y hat or positive four J hat, like this, then what that means is it's four units up. And if it was negative, it would be four units down. So with that in mind, now let's talk about how to break these vectors into their horizontal and vertical components using SOHCAHTOA. SOHCAHTOA, of course, means sine cosine and tangent. And when we say SOHCAHTOA, it's because this is an acronym. And so the SO stands for sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. The CA stands for cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And then the TOA stands for tangent equals opposite over adjacent. And it's very important we know sine, cosine, and tangent. You don't need to know secant, cosecant, and cotangent. So even if you don't know what I'm talking about, you don't need it this year. And so if I have a triangle, let's say here's my right triangle, and the hypotenuse is 10, and the angle is 20 degrees, or whatever the angle is, then I can find the x and the y components by, well, we can find x by saying cosine of 20 degrees equals adjacent x over hypotenuse 10, multiply both sides by 10, and it looks like X is going to be 10 cosine of 20 degrees. By the way, once you get really good at splitting up vectors into X and Y components, you can skip this first step right here and go straight to the end result right here. This is what I do because I'm very experienced and I'm awesome and blah, blah, blah. But if you're not there yet, then you can write out cosine first and then solve for X. That's perfectly fine. And then 10 cosine 20, make sure your calculator's in degrees, not radians looks like X is going to be 9.4 approximately. And then if I wanna find the Y component, first, I would just tell you it's going to be the same thing except 10 sine 20. But if you didn't know that, then you'd start by setting up sine 20 degrees equals opposite Y over hypotenuse 10. And then solving for Y, I just multiply 10 on both sides. So it looks like I predicted what it would be. Of course, I am a prophet. So 10 sine 20, that's going to be 3.4 approximately for the Y component. And so why that's important is because the vector 
10 at 20 degrees really corresponds to 9.4 x hat plus 3.4 y hat. That's how we write it in terms of x and y components. The reason why we would do this, by the way, is because we actually love it when it's x and y components because that means we can actually add the vectors together. If you don't have your vector components, then you can't add anything together and you're wasting a lot of time. By the way, if you want, you can write 9.4 i hat plus 3.4 j hat, and that's gonna be the exact same thing. So now finally, we have two more examples today. The first example to show you is, let's say I have the vector 4 x hat minus 2 y hat, that's my first vector, and then I'm going to add to that 3 x hat plus 9 y hat. So let's think about what this looks like. First, the 4 x minus 2 y is like 4 units to the right and 2 units down because it was negative. And you can write like a negative 2 here. But the end result, the resultant vector is this vector in red that points down to the right. But I like the components because those I can actually add together. Next, for the 3 x plus 9 y, that's going to be 3 to the right, about there, and 9 up, so pretty high up like that. So the resultant vector, again in red, looks like this. Now you don't need to do what I'm doing right now when it comes to solving the problem. Why am I doing this? Is I want you to add this first vector in red plus this second vector in red. That's what I'm saying in terms of the context of the problem. But because I gave components, there's something really easy we can do. You just combine like terms like 4x plus 3x is positive 7x hat, and then negative 2y plus 9y is 7y, positive 7y. So the resultant vector is this one right here, and if you wanna know what that looks like on graph paper, I would say it points seven to the right and seven up, because it's all positive, and the resultant vector is one that points up and to the right like that. So that's how we're gonna add vectors. Now one more example right now. Let's say I want to add these two vectors. The first vector points up and to the left, has a magnitude of 12, and has an angle of 60 degrees. And I'm going to add that to a vector that points down and to the left, and I'm going to give this one with an angle of 10 degrees. And let's say this vector has length of 9. So the question is, how do we add these two together? The very first thing we need to do is we need to split both of these into their x and y components. Let's start with the 12. So 12 for the hypotenuse, make a right triangle with 60 degrees at that angle right there. And I have the x and the y component. If I want to find x, x is going to use cosine. So cosine 60 degrees is equal to x over 12. Then I just multiply both sides by 12 x equals 12 cosine 60. And then for the y component, same idea, y is going to equal 12 times the sine of 60. And I kind of skipped a step, but the reason why is because sine of 60 equals y over 12, then multiply both sides by 12. It's identical to what we did for the x component. But now I need to plug this in a calculator and see what I get. So 12 cosine 60 is 6, and 12 sine 60 is going to be 10.4. So I have my first x and y components. It's 6x hat plus 10.4y hat. And this is actually wrong. Do you know why? It's because remember, this vector points up and to the left. Up and to the left means y is positive, x is negative. So it's actually negative 6x hat plus 10.4y hat. And obviously, as you can see, our calculator didn't know that it's because we have to figure that out by hand, okay? You can't rely on the calculator for that. It's up to you to say this vector points to the left or down, and so therefore it should be negative, depending on the problem. So now let's see if you can get this next triangle on your own, the magnitude 9 at an angle of 10. Let's see if you can get that. Go ahead, pause the video, try it for yourself. Okay, I'm assuming you've got it now. You can unpause the video. So, first thing I do, take my 9 here, make a right triangle like that, and that's 10 degrees in the corner right there. Again, I have an x and a y component. It looks like this time it's going to be flipped. What I mean by that is if I want to find x, then I have to use sine of 10 degrees 
because x is now the opposite leg because it's opposite of the angle. So x in the numerator, denominator is the hypotenuse, nine, and it looks like x equals nine times the sine of 10 degrees. So you'll notice that x does not always get cosine, nor does x always get sine. It depends. Sine will always be opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine will always be adjacent over hypotenuse. Don't forget that. That's the important thing to remember. And then y, if I want to find y, I would say cosine of 10 degrees equals adjacent y over hypotenuse, 9. Multiply both sides by 9. Looks like y equals 9 cosine 10 degrees. So first we're going to do the x. So that's going to be 9 times the sine of 10 degrees. Looks like x equals about 1.6. Technically, you can go to two, even three decimal places. I'm just going to one for today because it doesn't matter to me. And then for the y component, 9 cosine of 10 degrees, that is going to be 8.9. And remember, which of these is negative? Think about this vector, which way it points. Looks like it points down to the left, right? So that means they're both going to be negative, the x component and the y component. It's negative 1.6 x hat minus 8.9 y hat. And now finally, if I want to add these two vectors together, first I'm going to write them side by side. So negative 6 x hat plus 10.4 y hat plus negative 1.6 x hat minus 8.9 y hat. I just need to add these two vectors together now by combining like terms. Like the negative 6 and the negative 1.6 will give me negative 7.6 x hat and then positive 10.4 minus 8.9, that's going to be plus 1.5 y hat. And there's my resultant vector in component form. If you don't like component form, another thing you can do is Pythagorean theorem to actually find the total. And the reason why that would work is because 7.6 to the left is like that. 1.5 positive looks like that. And you'll notice we have a right triangle here where we can use Pythagorean theorem. So it would be, we'll call the resultant vector C for Pythagorean theorem. So 1.5 squared plus 7.6 squared equals C squared. You may notice I made them both positive now. I ignored the negative signs. The reason for that is because when I square a negative number, it will become positive anyway. And I knew that was going to happen. So it doesn't matter. So the left side is going to simplify to 60.01 and the right side is still c squared. So then I just take the square root of that and it looks like c equals about 7.7. .7. That is the magnitude, that is the magnitude of my vector. And of course you could also find the angle by looking back at that right triangle we just made, okay? So 1.5 this way and 7.6 that way. And you wanna find that angle theta. Notice this is tangent because tangent theta equals the opposite leg 1.5 divided by the adjacent leg 7.6 and if I want to find theta then I use the arc tangent button on my calculator again make sure your calculators in degrees not radians and we'll get a final answer of theta equals 11.2 degrees and again that's if you want the angle and the hypotenuse which we said was 7.7 .7. So with that, that is going to conclude today's video on how to add vectors. This is probably one of the most, if not the most important skill to have in physics because you're going to be using this all the time in just about every topic we have in physics from kinematics to forces to momentum to basically everything. So super, super important we know how to add and subtract vectors and how to break them up into their X and Y components. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And bye-bye.